Oh, how's everybody doing? <clears throat> everybody good? Everybody good in the hood? I got a lot of cover. Okay, let's see. Is David Wood still on? They're supposedly reviewing the debate. I try to watch some of it, but I didn't watch all of it. I just watched snippets here and there because there are two interesting things taking place at the same time. That's why I delayed the stream so that people could go watch their debate review. But it was interesting because David Wood hasn't seen it yet. And Apostle Prophet said that he didn't want to watch the entire three hours. So I guess as he's watching, he's doing something else. And when he heard certain things that got his interest, he focused on them. So, but anyway, one second. So I didn't watch it all the way through. I watched bits and pieces of it here and there. Don't, don't tell me about Myron Sweet Buddy. Don't, don't waste my time. Okay. Bits and pieces of it here and there. I need you guys focus. And one thing I got, though, is that Apostle Prophet didn't really represent my argument in the beginning accurately. David got it. David Wood got it when they're talking about <clears throat> when I was talking about trees and stones. Apostle Prophet didn't get it. He didn't represent it accurately. David Wood got it. He understood. So it was kind of a little letdown, disappointing that though Apostle Prophet watched, he didn't really understand what the argument was because he didn't represent why I argued the way I did. Not saying he said anything critical of me. I'm just saying he didn't get the point. David got it without watching it. Now, everyone, <clears throat> you're here listening? Everyone here, are we ready? Rock and roll? So I delayed it because I wanted to give them enough time to do the debate review and finish. And guys, are, there, are they winding down? Are they winding down? Did, can you go see if they're winding down? So remember the rules as you go check. Let me remind you of the rules. Help me to help you. Help me to help you. You're not going to ask irrelevant questions. You're not going to change the topic. You're not going to pontificate. You're not going to talk down to us and attack us and think you're better than us. You're not going to help me by posting verses or chiming in. This is a class. Let the spirit work through me. Use me as his mouthpiece and focus on me because I watch your comments to make sure you're getting it. And if you are, give the Holy Spirit glory. We are his disciples. You're not my followers. Respect the rules. Respect the rules so I can respect you. If I tell you the rules and you don't respect them, that means you're asking to be disrespected because you have no respect, no class. So why should we respect you? Now, at the same time that they're doing their thing, Greg Stafford is live right now, utterly, utterly obliterating, utterly humiliating, utterly decimating Kelly Powers. Kelly Powers made a very stupid mistake. And he back actually manifested on Greg Stafford's live stream. Now, in the case of Kelly, Greg Stafford, his criticisms are bona fide and valid. He actually gives me shout, shout outs throughout. He mentions me and he talks to me and he says, Sam, you're right. Even though he takes cheap shots at me and attacks me, right, <laughs> which is hilarious. In fact, I laughed hard throughout the discussion. Now, I didn't watch all of it. I watched 30 minutes here, 20 minutes here, because he's now around the four hour mark. Kelly manifested in the comment section. And Greg Stafford, nailed, and I warn Kelly, I warn Kelly. Now, I don't watch Kelly unless I'm bored and I'm trying to, let's say, write an article. Then I'll search for debates and I'll type in, let's say, Trinity debates and then recommend it, recommendations will show up. And one time when I said Trinity debates, I saw some of his latest stuff. So I decided to watch, and it was a bad mistake because the more I listen, the more I catch him in errors. And the last time when I called him up for his blunders, I guess Greg Stafford noticed. Greg Stafford noticed, and unbeknownst to me, Stafford responded to Kelly. Stafford responded to Kelly. Kelly went ape and made the stupidest mistake to do a response to me and to Stafford 
that got Stafford's attention, and now Stafford is destroying him because he caught Kelly in more lies, and he caught Kelly again making a huge blunder of the Greek, embarrassing himself, and lying and doubling down in his lies. And now you should see what Stafford's calling him. He's calling him a rapist and a pervert, calling him stupid. He even says, you're not normal. Whoever discipled you needs to be held accountable. You need to be held accountable. Maybe Anthony Rogers or James White can reach out to you. I mean, man, did he let him have it. It was bad. In fact, here, let me show you. And I may have to respond to Kelly. Now, he embarrassed himself. But let me show you. I'm going to screen share. It was bad. I'm sorry. I had to do this. Did I do it already? Yeah. It was bad. And it's still live. The problem with Stafford, he does four or five hours. I don't have time less than four or five hours. I'm not complaining. He's free to do what he wants. I don't have time. I'm not going to do it. But here, let me show you. He's still not done. But there are clips worth playing. Kelly humiliated himself. And he even said, he goes, you are stupid. He goes, pretty much he said, you're not on the level of me and Sam, even though he took shots at me. And he said, you're a rapist. You know why he called him a rapist and a pervert? He goes, you rape the Bible and you pervert the Bible. And he goes, see, you rape the Bible. And he even did physical gestures. Boy, did he tear into Kelly. And he made Kelly look bad because Kelly is bad. He even says, you're dumb. He says, you're dumb. You're stupid. This is beyond you. Confirming what I said. Isn't it sad and a shame that an Aryan apologist agrees with me, confirms what I've said about this man, that he's inept, and even said, you need to step down. You're not a Christian. He goes, you're not a Christian. And he kept calling, you know, giving him a shout out. Here, I'm going to show you. He's not done yet. Here, let's show it was bad, folks. Kelly's a, a, a disgrace. What he did today, disgrace. He's he's a joke. But go and tell him that. All right? Here, let me show you. He's he's still live right now. And because of it, I have to do another session on John 5.22, John 5.26, John 8. Not directly addressing Stafford, right? And Stafford falsely accused me of not following the very advice he gave to Kelly, Proverbs 18.13. To speak on a matter before hearing the case out is foolishness because I don't know if Stafford didn't realize it or he's mis misrepresenting the facts. I was responding to a clip he made, a clip he made about Michael and Zechariah 3. He accuses me of not listening to his nine hour rebuttal to me and therefore speaking before I heard the matter. And then he went to do another eight-hour response. Do you actually think I'm going to listen to nine hours? Let me assure you, unless there's some new argument that Stafford has not brought up in his books and his previous sessions, I am not exaggerating. Every one of his objections have been obliterated, destroyed. His fake God has been destroyed. His fake Jesus has been destroyed. His fake spirit has been destroyed. The Bible is his enemy and exposes him as a being the very thing he accuses us of. He's a Bible pervert. He worships a false god. And the early church was right. Just go watch and re-watch all the sessions I did. Respond to him in all the articles. There's nothing new. It's the same thing. So why am I going to listen to another eight-hour session of you repeating the same point, Stafford? Can you kindly just tell me what new argument you think you have? And I promise you, by the power of Jehovah, Jesus Almighty, I will obliterate your argument and further expose you as worshiping a false god. This is why my invitation stands. Stafford, you can join me live or I'll join you live. But don't require I have to watch 17 hours of your rebuttal. But let me show you. Here. He's, he's still live. Look, guys. Watch here. Here it is. Watch. And I'm not lying. He got decimated. Now, there is some guys I'd like to call out. Maybe they're men enough to show up. Maybe they're men enough to show up. And now, notice the other demon, the other dog that showed up, truth perverter. Lucifer's defender, Louis Fagadart, he's there barking. And then Stafford calls him a perv. Claiming to be I am, right, which is what he said it was. And in that. Let's go down here. Here. Here it is. Of man which is what they attempted to stone him for 
before the high priest, right? But the high priest is the one that reacted to that. Louis Faggot, the people there didn't Faggot. react to that part. Either Louis way, Faggot. it was the basis for the high priest objection. Anthony Rogers' boyfriend. But he was claiming to be the son of man, son of God, in John 8, 24, 28, with ego in me, and they didn't try to stone him. It was only when he claimed to pre-exist Abraham and therefore. Huge embarrassment. Let me show you how Kelly embarrassed himself. Let me show you. Ready? Right here. I got to show you. So Kelly's watching now. Kelly manifested. He embarrassed himself in the comment section. What did Craig do? Let me show you. Let's go here. Right here. Watch here. He humiliated himself. It was bad, guys. It was bad because he lied again, and he actually embarrassed himself with the Greek again. But let me just go back. You'll see it. See? And Craig said, all you needed to do was to say sorry because when I caught Kelly, Making a mistake about John 10, 36. Go watch it. He said that there Jesus called all we use, or they'll say weos. I said, there is no definite article there, Kelly. We looked at the Greek. Greg confirmed I'm right. Kelly comes back and lies and double downs, and Greg is now schooling him and scolding him. And then he made a huge embarrassment mistake. Watch her. I want to show you something because I want to show you he plays his clips. And I haven't laughed this hard in a while. Greg is hilarious. He really is. He's funny. I like him, man. He's still my favorite Aryan apologist. But I want to see where does he play him. Right here. I want you to see his. Oh, right here. Look. Look what he does to him. <laughs> look. This is so wild, dude. Look. I didn't know this guy was this pathetic. Right? I mean. <laughs> So unbelievable. Kelly, just sit back and, you know, try to show some maturity. By the way, he said to Kelly, you don't know jack shit. Your your argument are feces. He said it, jack shit. Your argument are feces. And he goes, you're dumb. You're stupid. He goes, don't worry, Kelly. This is beyond you. You can't understand. He's right. Sadly, he's right. A Trinitarian humiliates himself. Man, I mean, this is, I, I should ban you, but I want people to see. <laughs> In fact, let me see. Let me see if I can uh, look what he's going to do because he could. Kelly went berserk and he called it. He goes, Kelly, you're insecure. You're very proud and arrogant, but you flip. And he says, you're responding as I'm doing the live now. You don't even wait for me to finish my response. Oh, anyway, it is what it is. He might collapse, right? <laughs> he might break down. Let me get him on here. He made me. Let's make sure we have Kelly. all Kelly's Kelly's texts. He goes, you're manifesting, Kelly. And Kelly, I know you're watching. He humiliated you, guy. You lie. You humiliated yourself. You disgraced yourself. You made another error. You lied about Oweus being in the Greek. He caught you on it. And I caught you on it. But then you made a stupider mistake. You confused the two theu, which is the genitive of the God. And it's not Oweus or Weos. Embarrassing. Now, Greg is right. He did humiliate himself. He did. Kelly totally memorialized because <laughs> he's gone right okay good this is why he can't like lie <laughs> when he said if he tries to uh leave you know so let's just scroll through so we get kelly and total you know <laughs> here i'll take myself off Kelly, i want to make sure we memorialize your insanity he this is good me. look these are his comments i bet sam is enjoying this okay sure. So I'll let's just Sam keep, I'm going to scroll down. He kept giving me a shout out, keep calm. But he even said, he took shots at me, insulted me. He goes, you're worse than Sam. You know, Sam is worse, but you're even worse than Sam. And he said, you're right. You're not on our level. Meaning Kelly's not on my level and Greg's level. Now, Greg, take it easy on me, man. Why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you set up a GoFundMe page and pay for my counseling, man? If you really care, you know, because I'm just, you know. But anyway, watch. Down. I want to make sure we get all of Kelly's comments here. This is awesome. awesome. Guy's gone. Guy's gone. <laughs> He's hilarious. I was laughing hard, man. I swear. You made me laugh. Let's get it all in here. Let me get you all in here, Kelly. Greg, <laughs> I love you, man. Honestly. Greg, I don't care how many shots you take insult me. I love you, man. I pray Jehovah Jesus, the true God, saves you from the dragon. You repent. Uh, I really do love you. You're still my favorite Indian apologist. You actually help us make Trinitarians. Jehovah Jesus has used you to sharpen us. Because of you, more people are becoming Trinitarians and seeing that your God is false. Keep it up, man. Please keep it up.
Yeah, Kelly, you're kind of good. Kelly, this is wild, man. I didn't know you were this gone. See? Everybody so I'm kind of like, this kind of interesting. Maybe you're like a new Sam for us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're someone. Maybe you're like a new Sam. You guys, so I love this guy, man. <laughs> we can. Uh, oh, yeah. You're like going crazy, huh? See? Is he drinking mushrooms? He's in Lulu. <laughs> you mean La La Land? See? Because he's manifesting. And, and who's this? And Janine Devine is going crazy. <laughs> Kelly Power, I want to get all this. Hang on, let's get it let's all. He's going minutes, insane, and we'll go into the topic. And then you know, <laughs> we'll get back to my destruction of his lies and he, patheticness. Keep <laughs> yeah, going, Kelly. Go yeah. get it all. He's one of the stupidest trinitarians. He's a little better than Louis Fagadhart, truth defenders, who's truth perverter. He's getting schooled too, because that little faggot doesn't go to church, doesn't believe the Bible. He's Anthony's lover. The Lord rebuked them. By the way, what does it tell you about Anthony, the attention whore? He's going to be joining Dave DeWood tomorrow, from what I gather, to talk about Trinity Toheed. Now, from what I understood, it's in relationship to the debate. Why is that intention whore trying to get involved in discussing debate? You know why? Because now it's the hottest topic. The world is talking about the debate, no exaggeration. The world is not talking about the debate. And so now Anthony wants to join David Wood. Because Anthony is an attention whore. Now, David talks about him being great in the Trinity. No, he's not. And I'm not saying this out of the fact that I dislike him. Yeah, I do. I think he's a lowlife. Because if you want to know, partly the reason why the Muslims attacked my personal life, it was Anthony and Kelly Powers on Kelly Powers' show, where he and his faggot boyfriend, Louis Faggotart, not on the same show, but he's done it elsewhere, what I caught him, lied about the situation between my ex-wife and my kids, and Daniel Hakikachu pinned it, and he shared it. Remember I mentioned that? So now why is Anthony wanting a piece of this if it's not because he wants subscribers and views, if he was really a man of integrity, and if he really loved Jesus, and Jesus was number one in his life, why is he still joining David Wood, trying to get David Wood to build him up, make him relevant, when David Wood is working with Pastor Prophet and Gnostic, and David... Wood's friend, Pasta Prophet's wife, is a diehard Eastern Orthodox <clears throat> Christian because he's an attention whore. May the Lord use me to crush Anthony. I pray the Lord will deliver him into my end in a debate. I promise you, I will annihilate him and expose him, much like we've already done. William Albrecht has done. Perry Robinson, he's a fraud and a charlatan. Like Kelly, he's too proud. He has not yet apologized for quoting forgeries. Like Kelly. And if the Lord allows me to date him, I swear to you, I will end his apologetic career because he's overrated. That's a promise. Now, call my bluff, right? I don't respect him. He's he's scum. Sorry. God, heal my heart. May I, my hatred be righteous and my anger be holy. Now watch. Oh. <laughs> I think he's like copying and pasting the same thing again because he's gone, <laughs> right? I want to make sure I get all this because he calls me. He's attacking me again. He's going insane. Sam, Kelly is gone. You didn't tell me this, Sam. Hear it? You didn't tell me he was totally gone, right? <laughs> Maybe I should have. See, now he's talking to me. You see that? <laughs> oh, man, this guy made me laugh, dude. You see it? Sam, you didn't tell me this guy's gone, Sam. You didn't tell me he's gone. Yeah, you can thank Anthony Rogers for that shot. Guys, you can thank Anthony Rogers for the shot of Daniel Pik Pikachu, Hikachu, whatever his name, about my family and Ijaz bring it up. Him, this man who claims to be a servant of Jesus Christ, the Trini Trinitarian apologist. So why is he getting involved in my debate? Why does he want to chime in? Because he's an attention whore. May the Lord continue to expo expose him. And may the Lord open David Wood's eyes in Jesus' name, Lord. Arise, O Lord. Let your enemies scatter. Now watch. Asked you, hey, what's the deal? But I try not to, you know, we all know we got to be careful with Sam. So we got to get all this in here, though. This is you got to be careful with Sam. Thank you, Greg. I love you. I love you, mister. I love you, buddy. Can you do a GoFundMe page and get me some counseling? I need help, Greg. I'm hurting. This is awesome. Yeah, he's definitely copying and pasting. Good job, Kelly. What's You're totally gone. You're immature. You're manifesting. Kelly is manifesting. 
right here in our comments. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay, so he's gone, everyone. Yeah. I think I've documented that with his insanity. Not watching. Okay. Yeah. Full perv out, huh? Four Total four. craziness. Here's the part <laughs> where he, he this is awesome. I mean, I knew, you know, based on the fact that he couldn't even apologize for an obvious error. <laughs> I knew he was gone, but I mean, he okay. makes Sam look like, you know, normal, right? Hey, Thanks, That's buddy. pretty awesome, Kelly. I love you too, All right, man. Now I'm gonna be right here. I'm gonna go ahead. Except you watch here. Here is where Kelly humiliates himself because he's too proud to apologize, like Anthony Rogers. Same problem that that's why Anthony Rogers needs David Wood to make him relevant. God is crushing his pride and shutting him down. May the Lord save me from becoming that way. Watch how Kelly now embarrasses himself. This was bad. I want to just play this clip. Kelly, shame on you. I caught you, he caught you. And now, Kelly, you gave him an opportunity to mock the Trinity, call it pagan, because of your pride and your stupidity. You're dumb. You are. You suck, man. You're terrible. Watch. Watch this. We Watch see this. this story. He's talking to these Jews. These Jews are questioning him. They're even saying, well, if you're the Christ, tell us plainly. As it, he's, already, he's already stated it numerous times. That's very important, what I just said there as well. Watch. He's all if you don't know what the context is, is when I caught John uh, Kelly making a mistake in John 10, 36, he said there, Jesus said, I'm the son of God, Greek, o weus, or o weos. They like to pronounce it weos, weus. He said, the son, and we're, and we're never called o weus. And I said, no, that just shows that you're stupid. There is no o in the Greek. He didn't say o weus in the Greek. Greg jumped on it, he goes, Sam is right. This guy, out of pride, he doubles down, doesn't say, yeah, I made a mistake, and watch now the humiliation. Watch. Right. But they clearly don't they don't believe that or accepting that. Right? They said, tell us plainly. So they're looking for a little bit more explicit statement. It's obvious. Watch already state. Jesus already watch. has affirmed who he watch has already again. claimed to be as the okay. Christ. And then we're going to go on topics. He's already challenged people already. On his equality with the Father back in John 5, John 6, John 8 already. He's already claimed to be the Son of God over and over and over. None of this has anything to do with Sam's and my criticism of Kelly. Isn't it sad that Greg Stafford has to defend me? And Greg Stafford is in agreement with me? And Greg Stafford is saying I'm right? Isn't that sad? I thought this guy's the Trinitarian. This guy who looks like he's deranged. Maybe that's why Stafford said he's maybe sucking on too much mushrooms. The Trinitarian gave an opportunity to the Arian, who calls the early church fathers pagans, the Trinity pagan. Gave him an opportunity to not only bash him and do another session calling the Trinity pagan, but to defend me, the Trinitarian, and agree with me and prove I was right. All he needed to do is say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. See the pride? Misquoting the Greek text and misusing it as part of his argument in John 10, 36. So when I said in John 10 that he's claiming there's something unique about being the son, I wasn't just saying this was only in this spot. I was. It doesn't matter that you didn't say it's only in this spot. That has nothing to do yeah. with Sam's or I, my criticism. See? Our criticism, Kelly, which yeah. even a baby could understand, wow. is that you quoted a text with a word in it it doesn't have. See that? That was Th that's that See, that's it. Look. So Greg is right here. Greg, I love Greg. You can take shots at me, buddy. I love you, man. Don't take it personal. I'd still go take you out to lunch if I saw you. I mean it. And I still pray God would save you and bring you to the truth. And I pray the Lord will keep me in the truth. The triumph God lives. Your God doesn't exist. Sad, ain't it? Now watch how bad it gets. That is that this is that make sense now? I'll try to think of a simpler way to put it because I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I think you're just so far gone. I didn't realize you can't apologize. I didn't realize. See, 
that getting you to accept you made an error was such a big problem for you? See? Already building my Look case gets. up Good to man. that. Look how bad it gets. Great. Build your case. Where's the Greek article that you quoted in John 10, 36? Oh, it's not there? Exactly. Oh, that's our point. Wow. And then... Tell me this is not humiliation. And I told Kelly, and there is a guy there who said, Sam warned Kelly, you don't want to debate Greg Stafford. I said it. I'll say it again. Brethren, and I'm not boasting. Believe me, I'm not boasting. God, destroy my pride. Crush my flesh. Because I studied him. And Greg will tell you, Sam has studied my materials. I studied him for years, right? Because of that, the Holy Spirit took me a higher level and showed me how to destroy, annihilate, his best objections because the triune God lives. His God doesn't live. The Bible is a Trinitarian book. I'm telling you, and I mean this, he will destroy Kelly Powers. He will destroy Anthony Rogers. And I'm not lying. It's not out of hatred. I don't like these guys, but may God heal my heart. May I be a man of integrity. I'll speak the truth. Truth is the truth. Anthony is overrated. He's not on this guy's level. This man will obliterate him. And, and Kelly, because he's proud, he had to prove otherwise. No, 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 I'm good enough. I can take Greg. And he got humiliated. See what pride does? Lord Jesus, save us from pride. Save me from being a hypocrite in Jesus' name. Watch. He claims to be son of God, even though the word uh, ho, you don't see in the English and linear, but it is in the manuscript of the Greek. No, it isn't. See? Okay, that's our whole point. <clears throat> it is in P45. I mean, I found that out. You didn't know that. Exactly. Um, and it's not in, it's clearly not the best reading. And everyone who's barely competent in understanding the Greek New Testament text knows that. Except you, because you don't. Wow. Kelly, I know you're watching him. You manifested. Now you're watching me. If you really are serving Jesus Christ, don't be like Louis, Louis Fagadart. Satan's son, truth perverter, Lewis Lionheart. Don't be like Anthony Dodgers, that slob. Just say I'm wrong. Lord, forgive me. I will humble myself because you're getting humiliated like they are. That should tell you something. May the Lord destroy my pride. I don't want to become like you or Anthony or Lewis. And may the Lord save me from my sin and not give me what I deserve. Why is the Lord blessing us? And may he bless us. And may he always glorify Jesus. But you're getting humiliated and exposed and disgraced. You and Anthony and his boyfriend. I don't know what to tell you, man. It's up to you. I would stop ministry, take a break, go get some counseling. Just like Greg said. See, I'm not the only one. What are you talking about? It's in the manuscript. What are you talking about here? And you said it was in there, right? You're just revising history here See? while refusing to apologize for your error. Get bad. Now look how bad. When you look it up on the interlinear, look at it. Look here. at this over here. Look, look, guys. Look at this over here. I don't know if I should laugh or cry. He still wants to prove that it says the Son of God. Guys, watch this. I didn't watch the whole four hours. I can't. I watched about thirty minutes of this. Then I left and came back and I was watching. And I go, man, he's still at it. Guys, watch how bad it is. Please, brethren, watch. Learn from our mistakes. May we not repeat these mistakes. The Lord destroy all error and sin in us. Look how bad it gets. Okay, this is not a manuscript, Kelly. This is an online presentation of a published version of a Greek text. About Westcott and Horde, NA27, stuff okay. like that. It's not a manuscript. Watch how bad it gets. But it gets worse. Look, look up, man. I couldn't believe you did it because I watch his stuff. Maybe I'm just, you know. As you know, not that bright. Maybe you know, maybe really you and Sam really are like these legends out there, and I just don't get it. Look, you're 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 catching on, Kelly. <laughs> Look how he mocks him. Look how he mocks him. You and and Sam are these legends. I don't get it. Now watch. Look how he's gonna mock him. You're catching on, Kelly. 1036. This is Bible in a linear. Bible in a linear of of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world. Watch. You do say watch. you blaspheme. Because I said, son of God, I am. Now watch. I use this very interlinear Bible up in my response. Here's the word for son, guys. Pay attention. We use. 
There is no all. There is no definite article. Greg knows it. I know it. A blind man can see it. Instead of admitting we were right, watch the embarrassment. Now, guys, I want you to see this word, tu, tu theu. Anyone who knows Greek, tu is in the genitive, meaning it's the way the word for the would be written if it's showing possession, meaning if you say this belongs to God, this is God's. Well, in Greek, when you want to show something belongs to God here, you would spell it theu, right? Theu. See what it looks like a U? It's not a U, but you see, theu. To the Greek reader, that means here it's in the possessive case, right? Genitive case of God. But then if you want to make it specific of the God, then you put the article, but the article has to match the case of the noun. So if it's genitive, theu, the article won't be o, it'll be tu, tu theu. But when you have this word son, we use, this is what's called the nominative case. When you have the nominative case, don't worry about understanding for now, then you don't put tu, you would put o, o we use. Because if you put two, that means you don't know Greek. Now watch how he's going to embarrass himself. Because instead of saying, yeah, they're right, there is no article here, he's going to point to this. Watch the embarrassment. Now I know. Okay. So now we can all see that there's no Greek article with the word son. Anyone who knows anything can see that. Kelly misquoted this verse in the video we're all talking about, his debunking video debunking video for me when he didn't even know my view right yeah another embarrassment so this is the big lie right here that kelly made he lied to everybody and still is lying to people right that that it says hawkwios right here See, like, that's what he said well, now let's listen to what how he tries to deal with this watch, watch. right and he actually said remember if you just go back before he brought this up he said the manuscript does have it so he's crazy, right? <laughs> is not only not a manuscript, Kelly, and I don't know why you would refer to it that way, but whatever. But he said it; it does have it. Okay, let's let's see what he says look, here. Look, look right here, right? It doesn't say the. Oh no! Look! Look! You see what he highlighted? See what he highlighted? Two say you. Now watch Greg pulverize and bury him. And he's a Trinitarian who just got destroyed by the Syrian. And, his, and Greg's 20 viewers, his 15 subscribers, are laughing. Does everyone see what he's doing? This is, this is so gone on so many levels, right? So, Kelly, uh, you know, I don't know how to say this without, like, sounding mean or, you know. Oh, well, I guess at this point it doesn't matter, right? Um, you don't know what you're talking about. See? I don't even know why you're highlighting that right there. Yeah. Why are you highlighting that Greek article, which is in the genitive case, and is with the noun theu in the genitive case? Huios is in the nominative case, Kelly. See that? So what are you talking about, right? You, you don't, you see this? He gets angry and angry with Kelly because he sees he gets more proud and arrogant in his so-called response to me and him. And he calls him stupid, retarded. He says, you don't know jack shit. It's like you're a Bible rapist and pervert. You try to rape the Bible, feces. You're gone. You're the worst. You, you can't even understand the issues. You need to stop. You need someone to call you out. Man, really bad. It's like if you look just above the word, you see that big question mark? Look straight above that. See that word hati and how there's no word there? But if you look just over to the far right at the top, you see hati again. Because it has different functions in a sentence. Well, the same with the Greek article. You don't always have to translate it because theos is a definite noun. Remember, like I tried to explain to Kelly when I was trying to help him out in the video where I, ex I 
<laughs> exposed his error further after Sam did. Say after that. So I tried to tell him, I said, you can make the argument that Weas is definite here and even use the English article. That's what I said. Remember I said, if Kelly assumes that a Weus or o Weas, the son, right? You'd have to have the different article to make Jesus be the son of God. Then he just embarrassed himself because since it doesn't say o Weus, that means, is Kelly now going to say that Jesus said, I am a son of God? No, that's not how it works. You can still translate this, I am the son of God, because in Greek, you don't have an indefinite article, a or an. You have the definite article, and it's various cases. But that doesn't mean that in Greek, if the word doesn't have the definite article, that means then you translate in English as, a or an it can still be translated as the son of god and i'm not a greek scholar but the way he argued see it says all way or or all we use the son of god so if it just said if just said we use to theu without the article that means a son of god a son of the god see look he's saying you don't need the greek article kelly it could still mean that jesus said i'm the son of god why are you making a big deal out of an article that doesn't appear in the Greek to make your case? If that's your argument. But he didn't make that argument. He argued that it had the Greek article and he quoted it, misquoted it. Now we see Kelly. He said it has the article. See, so he shocked. clearly doesn't understand the basics of Greek, right? He's shocked. He's like, what? This is not... The definite article before the sun. It's the definite article that goes with theu to theu. So we need to like only use Kelly for entertainment purposes, or like to show how pathetic the Trinitarians are, the non-Catholic yeah. Trinitarians in this case. Non-Catholic Trinitarians. By the way, Catholics. He gave me a shout out and a praise in a way. He said non-Catholic Trinitarians. Right. He said since Sam has become Catholic that it's been actually very productive for me. In other words, my decision to be part of the Catholic communion, right? If the Lord shows me otherwise with the filioque and the papacy, his will be done, but I'm here until the Lord shows me otherwise. His will be done. I surrender him, not the praise of men. He said that that actually was something good for me. He actually said something positive about me being in the Catholic church. I'm amazed. Do you hear it? Jared? I don't understand what he, I mean, he's just embarrassing himself again and again and again, right? What, what are you talking about, Kelly? That's the Greek article with Theu. You said the manuscript does have it. See? Well, this isn't a manuscript, and it doesn't have it, and you're highlighting an article that's grammatically unrelated to the word we're talking about. So you're retarded. Well, see, and I regret taking you seriously on any level. Ouch. Why is he confirming what I've been saying about you, Kelly? Because I know you're listening. Kelly, the mouth of two or three witnesses. I'm not the only Trinitarian. William thinks you're a joke because you can't have a respectful conversation. You're trying to cut him off. And he was patient with you. With me, I just muzzled you for being a spiritual dog until you repent. And now this guy. Kelly, two or three witnesses, man. You're stupid. You're dumb. You're not intelligent. You're a terrible apologist. I'm sorry. Man. I'm just being honest. You're on the level of Louis Fagadart, who can't defend anything if his salvation depended on it. And he needs to get saved. But I'm going to try to make the best of it, okay? Oh, no. See, look. What am I going to do? Look at arrogance. You're going to collapse into a catastrophe. Ouch. Because this is unrecoverable. This is See? beyond humiliation See? and a disgrace. See that? But it does have it. I don't know how to Jesus speak, so shut the hell up. Written down in the Greek. Look at it. Look at his so everybody, Look at his Kelly Powers is not qualified on 
any level, okay? Yeah. You should not be watching his videos. Oh. Really about anything because of what we're seeing here. Hear that? But when he starts talking about Greek. Hear it? We'll just leave it at Greek for now, right? We already know he adds words like we're talking about. <laughs> John 10, 36. Now, Kelly is insisting on showing us how pathetic he is. Wow. By lying again. See? And wow. claiming that the article is there See for Huyas, right? So wild. Hey, um, Dr. White or anybody who knows, like, listen, any Greek at all, okay? Look, look at his right. Can you help Kelly? Wow. Can someone help Kelly before oh, no. he totally destroys himself? I mean, it's actually, it's too late, pretty yeah. much, right? I tried, Greg. I swear, Greg. Love you, man. My brother, humanity. My favorite Aryan apologist. I swear I tried. He's too proud and arrogant. He's nasty. I wish he was on your side and didn't claim to be a Trinitarian. I would rejoice if he was an Aryan because I'd use him to demonstrate what Arianism produces, but sadly identifies as a Trinitarian. I swear I tried, Greg. People will bear witness. I tried, dude. I swear. One more chance to apologize, Kelly. But now you got this, right? This is another separate video right here. This guy is out here trying to tell people about the Bible and Greek, and he's literally showing us how stupid he is, right? There's no other word here, Kelly. Not being mean at all. Stupid. You're a disgrace and a humiliation. Wow. And this right here, this is almost worse than you adding a word to John 10, 36. This failure here, this lie that the article is before we ask here, Wow. And your failure to see the grammatical case difference between we yeah. and they you and two. A few more this minutes. is okay. so beyond anything I ever would have thought I'd be dealing with, except from someone who's like brand new, right? Like you don't know anything and you're wow. just winging it, right? And remember, Kelly Bose said he's been in ministry for 30 years. Now, have I not said the same thing, guys? Now, you guys think I was being petty. A few more minutes. I was being petty. I was being vindictive. I was being mean. No, I was being honest. Brethren, may the Lord purge my heart. May he give us the heart of the Father, the heart of the Lord Jesus, the heart of the Holy Spirit, the one true God. When I tell you about someone, I'm not being petty. When I tell you someone's stupid and bad, I'm being honest. And I'm being honest. Kelly's pathetic. 30 years. But you see what he's saying? 30 years. Look, I can be honest. Didn't I tell you Greg Stafford is a beast? He's the best Aryan apologist. If you can go through his material, you'll be a stronger Trinitarian. And I have no doubt the triune God lives. He'll, he's going to be used by Jesus to make you a Trinitarian till death and forever. Because when you can destroy his arguments, you'll have no doubt the Trinity is true. And that's what he did for me. I thank the Lord for him. The Lord is using him. Jehovah Jesus is using him to make Trinitarians. Did I say that? If I was being... Petty, I would say the guy sucks. No, he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. When I tell you, Kelly is dumb. And when I tell you, I'm being honest, Anthony Rogers is overrated. He's not an intellectual. He's stupid. All he does is parrot arguments, right? That he picks up here and there, but he's not that bright. He's not intelligent. I'm not the only one who says it. I can bring other people say the same thing. And he's also arrogant. He will not accept correction. He'll double down and humiliate himself. And Anthony Rogers, there's nothing he can tell you you won't get here and elsewhere. I'm not lying. You understand? I'm not lying. You see? So it's sad this Aryan has confirmed what I said. Kelly, shame on you, dude. You gave this guy an opportunity to slander to the Trinity. Shame on you. The Lord rebuke you till you repent. Almost done. Sad. Right? This is wild. That's interesting. Now, maybe, I don't know. You know, th this, this. Yes, you don't know. Uh, We're just right there, okay? You you just hit it on the head right there. Watch, I'm, I'm going to mock him. Could be a, I don't know, right? Exactly. See? Stay with that, Kelly. <laughs> Stay with those words. I don't know. That <laughs> will serve you well. That will keep you from making terrible hilarious. errors. That might save you this horrific <laughs> embarrassment. He's hilarious, dude. Look. Right? Now, what's interesting Look at Greg Stafford. And someone confirmed the interlinear doesn't have the different article. 
And look how he's going to humiliate him. Look. I don't know if you defend still the Kingdom of the Linear Translation. I know you this is so wild too. I, I'm telling you, this is a new level. We need to we need to think about how we can use Kelly. Okay, <laughs> I like we were trying to use Sam Thank and you, get him up. This is all working, by the way. But Kelly's beyond Sam in terms of being gone. There's Thank no you. Greg. Thank you, sir. Thank you for saying that I'm not the worst of the worst. Someone worse than me. That I'm gone, but he's more gone than me. Greg, can you help me, sir? Can you do a GoFundMe page and maybe get me some counseling? I'm teachable. I'm humble. I'll admit it. I'm on the spectrum. Greg, help me, friend. You're my brother, you man. I love you, man. I love you. Rational conversation you can have with Kelly. Same. Not, no. Not what we just saw. No. Can't happen. Can't happen. Now, he's going to do something here that's even, <laughs> this guy's a new level. I'm telling you. <laughs> On the one hand, I, I can't take him seriously, but on the other hand, <laughs> Look at oh, that's something to hear. We might be able to use Kelly to highlight how pathetic they are. So we need to focus on that. Let's finish this right here, though. Now, sadly, he gets more vicious and he gets more hilarious. I didn't watch the four, so I stopped about like 20 minutes later into this, left, came back, and it was four hours. So I was watching the end. I'm not going to watch the four hours, but these highlight how he got humiliated. Listen to this. Listen. To, see how he's holding up the, the 1960s Kingdom in the Linear? He never shows it, right? Check this out. You defend the New World Translation, but this is for you, Greg, just so you know. I'm talking to Greg right now. In the Kingdom in the Linear of John 10 and 6, it has the Greek and it has the word the there. Okay, now he doesn't show us that. Yeah, he doesn't. And from what we just saw, his up. misrepresentation, right? If you look where I just moved my head, you can see this section we just looked at where he totally blew the Greek grammar. No, he didn't become a father only Unitarian. No, no. You obviously are new to my channel. Put in Greg Stafford on my blog and on my YouTube. Greg Stafford believes in Arianism, meaning that the father begot or produced the son before all other creation. So the son is Michael. He becomes a man, Jesus. So he's a Jehovah Witness in that regard. But he thinks that Jehovah Witness Society is corrupt and it no longer is a true organization. So he started his own group. He is an Arian and he started his own group. Arian meaning a follower of Arius, not neo-Nazi. Arius, right? He follows similar beliefs. So those who think like Arius did, Father brought the Son into being before the creation of the heavens and the earth. We call them Arians. That's what he believes. <clears throat> so he started his own group. It's called Christian Witnesses of Jah. So he's got his own group, his own sect. And lied again, lied again. <laughs> about the article being there? I don't know if he's saying the kingdom in her linear has ha before huios. Like he misquoted in the whole video we're talking about, the debunking. Or if he's saying it has like two, like he just showed us that he doesn't understand basic Greek grammar. Yeah. See? I think he's saying, because I checked the 1985 Kingdom in a Linear. Yeah. I had that out of my packings. And it, it does not use ha. Exactly. And the West Garten, West Garten Hort text doesn't use ha. Exactly. Before huios. Yeah. I think he's so gone. He thinks that two, the genitive article for Theu, <laughs> he thinks that's the article for Huios. I do. He just said it was, right? It's so wild. Gone. I think he looked up the kingdom interlinear because I, I had to point out, and he doesn't show it. Gone. Exactly. Kelly. Gone. Gone. <laughs> Gone. Kelly. I think he's looking at two, the genitive article for Theu in the kingdom interlinear. And saying that it, it's the article for Huias. If anyone has the 1969, I think it is, Kingdom of Linear, the purple, verify right now if it has the article Ha before Huias, because he's crazy, right? So he's just gone on so many levels. This is so awesome. Guys, bear with me. I, I, this was So go bark up their tree. Go bark up their tree. And this is why he, got, he unleashed him. He goes, you're so arrogant. And he is. He's an arrogant, proud, almost like a narcissist. 
and I don't want to use that term loosely, then it loses meaning. And he goes, you're so insecure. And he is. He's very insecure because when I talked about his hair, William told me that someone is saying that in one of the responses, which I didn't watch, he's talking about, well, look, I don't have any gray hairs. What's wrong with you, dude? Take it easy. I got low self-esteem, but I don't react like you. Damn. If you're still defending the kingdom and linear, if you are. Okay, Kelly, you weren't you using the kingdom and linear when you lied to everybody and said that the Greek article is used with Huios in John 10, 36. And you just lied to everybody again. And you showed the very, you went to the Bible hub just like Sam did, right? Yeah. Kelly, this is not recoverable. See that? Unfortunately, you're gone. See that? This is going to be like one of the greatest humiliations and embarrassments of all time absolutely i'll bet you sam's gonna do a video on what i just talked i got to you first sam i got to kelly first sam <laughs> thank you greg i won't have to do it i'm just playing your clip love you man love you hermano love you mijo yes we don't worship the same god yes your god is false it doesn't exist yes the bible destroys and decimates your false god because the god of the bible is a triune god but I still love you as my brother humanity. And Greg, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to go to counseling. Would you pay for it? And I'll take you to all you can eat buffet. And and oh, I'm gonna re I'll challenge you, Sam, on who can get to Kelly's horrific errors faster. Okay, it's gonna be awesome. See, look, thank you, Kelly. You now made Greg like me. He now likes me a lot, and he's now inviting me to humiliate you. Shame on you, Kelly. You're the Trinitarian, you clown. Bet you Sam will do another video or comment on that because that's so bad what he just said. See? Bringing up the Bible hub and the kingdom in a linear and, and claiming that two in the genitive is the article for we us in the nominative. See? He's gone. See, it's so awesome, everybody. Look, and he's loving it. Bear with me, guys. I know you're like, oh, it's well, like, then boring. how about that? But just one. How about, How about what? That you misrepresented and misquoted the Kingdom Interlinear from the 1960s and misquoted and misrepresented the Bible Hub in ways beyond your initial misrepresentation about the article Ha before Huios. Now okay. you're putting two with Huios. Unbelievable. This is beyond everything we've ever seen, everybody. See that? Wanted to point that out to you. You wanted to point out to me that you can't interpret basic greek even in an <laughs> interlinear or on the bible hub in addition to doing that already with weos you did it now with two theu <laughs> sam isn't this awesome <laughs> so watch this up, Greg, man. Sam, this is so awesome. back over in john five this is where i was building my case as you i'll show you in a second but i just want to point this out this is john five nineteen. <laughs> jesus is speaking to him and what does he say Right here. Watch this. The. Look, okay. Now, the son. I'm going to stop after he does this. Look, watch this embarrassment. And Greg is going to nail him. He said in John 10, 36, there it says, O we use or O we us. And it doesn't. There is no O, you see? There is no O in John 10, 36. Instead of admitting he's wrong, he says, all you need to do is say you're wrong, man. That would have made you look bitter. He goes to another passage where Jesus calls himself the son. Watch how Greg is going to destroy him. He's going to say, that's not our argument. He says, that's not Sam's argument. That's not my argument. Watch. Right? Right there. He calls himself the son. Matt, or not Matt, sorry. No offense. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Elections are so important. Sorry. It's the basis of our democracy. We have, as Republicans, had an... Sorry about that. All right, so back to Greg. That he was his father. Crazy. You they you just saw in the you can't My pathetic mistake, pagan. See, pathetic pagan. See, he's got him. This is lower than John B. Right? This pervert, per, pathetic pervert. See, even called him pathetic pervert. No, that's even as. Okay, let's go down here. Yeah, I'll deal with the God father doing. So you say in your video, well, Jesus. Sorry, guys, I screwed up. Here right here. John 5, 19. Right? Go back to it. Sorry, guys.
a few more minutes. I hope you guys are not bored with this. I just want you to see, and we're going to end it here. When you don't know how to do proper exegesis see? of things see, or a proper response to somebody. Yeah, and he's ranting. 1969, too. I think it is. Kingdom of the the purple. Okay. I got you first, Sam. I got to Kelly first, okay. Sam. <laughs> and, and oh, I'm going to, I'll challenge you, Sam. Now watch, because of his arrogance, his disgusting arrogance, he's going to accuse Greg of not doing his due diligence by watching what he actually said. And Greg's going to say, you're a liar because there's nothing misquoted. You now ran to another point. Watch, look embarrassment. Sam, on who can get to Kelly's horrific errors faster, okay? This would be awesome. I'll bet you Sam will do another video or comment on that because yeah, that's so bad what he just said. He's more of a prophet than Muhammad. He prophesied. Damn, Greg, you may be right. You may be a prophet. Maybe there's a new shout out. There is no God but Allah, and Greg Stafford is his messenger. La ilaha illallah, Greg Stafford, Rasul Allah. Bringing up the Bible hub and the kingdom in a linear and, and claiming the two in the genitive is the article for huias in the nominative. He's gone. It's so awesome, everybody. Watch here. Watch the lie here, the embarrassment. Well, then, how about that? But just one. How about what? That you misrepresented and misquoted the Kingdom of Linear from the 1960s and misquoted and misrepresented the Bible Hub in ways beyond your initial misrepresentation about the article Ha before Huias. Now you're putting two with Huias. Unbelievable. This is beyond everything we've ever seen, everybody. Yep, it is. Wanted to point that out to you. You wanted to point out to me that you can't interpret basic Greek even in an interlinear or on the Bible hub? In addition to doing that already with Weos, you did it now with Tutheu. <laughs> Sam, isn't this awesome? <laughs> but watch this. Oh, you're awesome, Greg. So back over in John 5, this is where I was building my case, as you'll, I'll show you in a second, but I just want to point this out. This is John 5.19. Jesus is speaking to him, and what does he say right here? The look, look at embarrassment. The son, right? Watch here. Right there. He calls himself the son. Matt, or not Matt, sorry. No offense to Matt Slick. Sam Buffoonian so yeah, Buffet, who picks and chooses whatever you want to clip when you don't know how to do proper exegesis of things exactly. or a proper response to somebody. Watch Greg. Look at that. Watch In spot. fact, when you go through John 5, 19 through 23, you'll see something interesting. You will see Jesus, Jesus calling himself. himself. No one is denying that Jesus yeah. is called ha Huias in other verses, Kelly. Wow. <laughs> Again, everybody, he's gone. You hear that? He doesn't even under. I mean, it's so far gone. It's pathetic, right? So. He's it? running around trying to like prove that he's called the son of God. Yeah, me and Sam know that, Kelly. Ouch. When Greg Stafford has to confirm I'm right and say, yeah, me and Sam know that and defend me. And Arian, this is what I want you to hear. We're going to end it right now. A few, just a few more seconds. Do you hear it? When Greg Stafford confirms I'm right and has to correct Kelly's lie, he's doing what Daniel Hakikuchu did. And what Ijaz Ahmed in, did in the debate, straw man, smoke and mirrors, red herrings. No one ever denied that Jesus is called the son or we use. Never denied it. That wasn't our point. What does it say that Greg Stafford is on my side, agreeing with me, confirming I'm right, defending me, and exposing Kelly as a liar who has no honor, no shame, no integrity, and yet he claims to be a Trinitarian. That's why he said you need to be thrown out of the church. He goes, you're not a Christian. He says it. Matthew 18, I, Sam, and others, we call you to get out. You're of the world. You're not a Christian. Shame on you for lying and doubling down. He said it. Sad. We just also know that he's not called that in the Greek of John 10, 36. That's, that's the point. And you're too stupid on so many Ooh. levels to realize that's true. You still still think we're wrong, right? And that you're right, beyond gone. Wow, great. The son, okay, Ho Huyos, seven times, buffoonian. See, look, listen, Greg Stafford.
No, he muted himself by accident. This is the final one. I promise you. This is it. Final part. This is it. Now, he didn't know he was muted. Final one. Listen to this. And then we're done. I can't go through the four hours. I didn't watch it. But these were the points. He pretty much exposed Kelly. Kelly, shame on you. You're disgusting. You need to stop doing ministry. You're an arrogant jerk. Because if you're humble, you'd simply say I was wrong. You now allowed him to mock the Trinity and further humiliate you by compounding your lie with another lie, showing you don't know the Bible. Yeah, he was muted. He didn't know. Now this is it. And then we're done. We're going to get into the top, I promise you. But Lord willing, tomorrow I'm going to be doing John 5, John 8, John 10, because there are certain things that Greg brought up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Greg brought up, I need to thoroughly address, even though I've addressed it in previous articles that I've written over the years and others, but I need it for your benefit so you don't get caught by these weak arguments that have been demolished. So Lord willing, tomorrow, Saturday, God willing, it will be on the deity of Christ from John 5, John 8, John 10, some of the things he said that I need to address for your benefit. So when they bring them up, you'll laugh at their objections. The triumph God lives. Greg's God is a figment of his imagination. I apologize. I had a little mute there. But um, so let's just, what did he say there? Watch, Watch this. this. That's, That's number two. There's. Watch here. And we're, we're done. And then we'll go. Oh, Julio's seven times. Buffoonian. See, he's calling me Buffoonian. See, Greg Stafford. Right. But it's not used in John 10, 36, and you said it was. That's our whole point. You're not addressing it, and this has nothing to do with it. Wow. Sorry. Ow. Watch this. Ow. That's number two. There's two right there. Ow. Watch this. Ow. Watch on the screen. Here. Okay. Well, let me let him make this final point. Here's another one. The son, the father. Okay. It has nothing to do with whether or not it says the son in John 10, 36, okay. like you said it did. So not that has nothing to do with our issue or our criticism. You're just distracting people onto something we all already accept. See? It's pathetic. Oh, that's it. I can go on like this. You got it, right? See that? Because he's become like Anthony Rogers, whom he considers a friend, no wonder, birds of a feather, he doubled down. He didn't say I was wrong. John 10, 36, it doesn't say, oh, we use, I was wrong. You're right, Sam. I apologize. And Greg said, if you had apologized, that was it. It would make you look all the more better. Guys, focus in the comment section. Don't engage each other. He insisted it's there. And he went to the word to, the definite article in the genitive form, which is the God, has nothing to do with the Son, John 10, 36. And then he lied that that was the argument we're refuting by claiming if we watch them in context, which I actually did, that elsewhere, Jesus calls himself, or at least John, when quoting Jesus' words in Greek, is called O Weus. None of us denied it. So he doubled down. He distracted folks. He lied, embarrassed, him, embarrassed himself, allowing Greg Stafford to make mockery out of him, calling him a rapist, a pervert, calling him stupid, calling him retard, saying you don't know jack shit. You don't know jack shit, right? All you're spewing is feces. You're stupid. You're gone. You're the worst, and laughing at him. And he, and Stafford was right. Uh, there are other things he said, and I, you know, I, I laughed hard, but I want to get to the the point. So instead of accepting correction, and I didn't know about the responses of Kelly, I don't watch him. Why then did I <clears throat> criticize him a week ago? Doesn't mean that I'm contradicting myself because I didn't watch him. No, let me repeat again. I don't like to watch this guy unless. If I'm bored and I find a recommendation, and if he happens to be one of the recommendations on a topic that I want to listen to as I'm writing, I'll listen. For instance, when I want to write an article, just to remind you, when I want to write an article, what I'll do is I'll play something on YouTube that I can hear, but I don't have to watch. Because if I have to watch, I can't write an article. So I'll be writing and listening. So what I'll do is I'll go on the search engine of you to put in Trinity debates, Deity of Christ debates, and see what pops up. So his stuff popped up, and it got me interested to go watch some of the older stuff. And I saw some new stuff, and I said, all right, let me watch. And that's where I pick up on his errors. I'm not looking for errors. I'm not 
combing through his videos to find errors. He's irrelevant. He's not important. I really, I'm being honest. But as I'm writing, I'll catch some. Wait, what did he say? And I'll go back. I'll go, damn, I don't believe he said it. That's how I caught his egregious blunder in John 10, 36. But his pride and arrogance for me calling him out and saying that you're not on Greg Stafford's level because it was a response to Greg Stafford that I found. And I had watched it a while back, forgot about it. Then I rewatched it. I said, Greg Stafford will pulverize you. His pride got hurt. No, he can't. And Sam, you took me out of context. And I can school Stafford. And now you see what happened. Now you see what happened, right? Oh, well. So let's begin. And Lord willing, pray for me tomorrow. The Lord gives me the health, discipline, and holiness. That the Lord saves me from becoming the thing the Lord hates. And I practice what I preach. Tomorrow, Lord willing, Saturday, I will go to John 5, John 8, John 10, and deal with some of the typical objections raised by Arians like Greg Stafford. Because I heard one of the arguments that he's used in the past regarding John 5, 26, and regarding John 5, 22, and the word, <clears throat> John 5, 23, and the word kathos. And I, I need to readdress readdre re those again for your benefit because Kelly's not that smart to know how to refute him. So pray for that. Pray for the ministry. Pray the Lord will preserve you too, that I don't get a, three a third strike. Keep the channel and remove the strikes, Lord willing. By October, they'll be removed. And pray the Lord will be glorified in this ministry. And we finish the race. So let's just say the Lord's Prayer and we begin. Name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Holy Spirit, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son. Destroy all errors in us. Save me from every single error so I don't allow the enemies of Christ to use that to mock. <clears throat> and destroy all sin in us. Guard my tongue. Give me perfect recall of every jot to a portion of Scripture, a perfect exegesis. And give me the humbleness to admit when I'm wrong. Destroy our pride and arrogance and own us and fill us and possess us and purify us. Wash us, our loved ones, our daughters, in the blood of Jesus Christ and purge us in your purifying fire. Bless this session. Destroy distractions. Strengthen my throat with the health it needs. Grant me the health I need to serve the church and glorify the Father, the Lord Jesus, and you, Holy Spirit. We trust in you in Jesus' name. All right. So let's continue where we left off. But I wanted to play this clip. Someone sent this to me. I think it was the archive, right? Yeah, it was the archive. God bless that brother. He tirelessly sends me links. And also, I want to give a shout out to Romeo. Go subscribe to his channel. Make this brother's channel go viral. Always check the community section on my YouTube page. Always check the community section on my YouTube page. Because I will try to link to articles, rebuttals, and videos to bless you. Pray the Lord will guard me and protect me not to say something so the channel gets flagged. The Lord protect us from censorship because we're now getting close to 260,000. May the Lord increase the numbers for his praise, not for my glory. So check this daily community section. So here I announce that they're going to do a debate review. And here I mention and I tag Berean. Poor guy, man. May you repent, dude. You are a disgrace. Now, Romeo did us a favor. He took highlights from the debate. And he made a video, because the debate is over three hours long, close to four hours. But he took highlights of the debate on a channel. So go to my community section, click on that post, go to his channel, watch it, and subscribe. He's one of my mods. He's a blessing from the Lord Jesus. Now, sadly, fresh and fit. I guess they're all about male dominance, red pill. So sadly, disgustingly, they have images of half-naked women. May the Lord Jesus keep us pure as if we don't already struggle. Lord, have mercy on us. But I only posted this because someone brought it to my attention that 
one of the hosts said that these Muslims got destroyed by Sam Shimon. But then I believe the archive clipped it for me. So now you go to my videos. Not here, man. Come on. Sorry. Make a mistake. So now you go back to my channel and click on videos. And here it is. Let's watch it. This is it. Fresh and, and by the way, shout out to my brother, Protestant believer. Lord Jesus bless you, brother. Thank you for uploading the video. He now uploaded it. Right? Because Fresh and Fit gave us permission. But here it is. Now, the Muslims went irate, started attacking the host, because, again, they're pagan, Mohammedan, stone kissers, who are dishonest until they repent. Well, he's a Christian. Of course he's going to say you won. But why didn't your Muslim guy say the Muslims win? When he's asked, Myra, so all they brought good points, and he goes, come on, be honest. He goes, well, I got to go watch it because I was busy moderating. He could have easily said, being a Muslim, no, the Muslims won. Because that's why the pagan stone kissers are responding to what this so-called Christian said about who won. We just had a great debate, uh, literally just la like last show. Amazing. We had um, Christianity versus Christianity Islam. versus Islam. Yeah. We had Dan and we had um, Sam Shimon. Uh, Sam Shimon. Jay Dyer. Jay Dyer. And Ayaz. Ishan. Ishan. I Ishan. Okay. Uh, keep it. Keep it real. Who won? Honestly, bro, they both made great arguments because, like, I mean, they do what they always do. Both pick, of them were like, "Who won?" Yeah, pick my. I game. gotta go back and watch it. Keep it real, bro. I was so busy officiating and like taking right, notes I'm and shit like you. that. I'm a show Sam Shimon destroyed his fingers. Yeah. Did you hear that? Did you? Hear yeah, I am. Ah, uh, shut up. I won't play. We it. just had a great debate. Okay. Uh, he'll say, "Well, he'll of course he's gonna say that because he's a Christian and Muhammad Hijab pwned him." Now, what does that tell you about Muhammad Hijab? That fat cow bully. On their show, and he's debating this guy. As you can tell, he may be a Christian by name. I pray he becomes a Christian by conviction. And then claiming victory over him. Right? He's supposedly a Muslim, but not a practicing Muslim. So they say, well, of course he's going to say you won. He's a Christian. Well, why didn't your Muslims say the Muslims won? Because he had to be honest. He tried to skirt the issue. You'll even find him laughing when I take shots at Muhammad, this guy. But now watch here. In the bait, if you watch it. Uh, literally just la like last show. Amazing. We had... Um, Christianity versus... Christianity Islam. versus Islam. Yeah. We had Dan and we had... Um, Sam Shimon. Uh, Sam Shimon. Jay Dyer. Jay Dyer. And Ayaz? Ishan. Ishan. I Ishan. Okay. Uh, keep, it, keep it real. Who won? Uh, honestly, bro, they both made great arguments because, like, I mean, they do what they always do. Both pick, of them were like... Who won? Yeah, pick my... Keep it I got to go back and watch it. Bro! I was so busy officiating and, like, taking right, notes I'm and shit like you. that. Sam Shimon... Destroy this thing. Is yeah. Did you hear it? Now, I can't repeat what he said. He said the N-word. I can't say it. I'll be called a racist. Okay? Did you hear it? Let's hear it one more time. Just had a great debate. Uh, literally just la like last show. Amazing. We had... Um, Christianity versus... Christianity Islam. versus Islam. Yeah. We had Dan and we had... Um, Sam Shimon. Uh, Sam Shimon. Jay Dyer. Jay Dyer. And Ayaz? Ishan. Ishan. I Ishan. Okay. Uh, keep, it, keep it real. Who won? Honestly, bro, they both made great arguments because, like, I mean, they do what they always do. Both of them were like, who won? Yeah, pick my Keep it I got to go back and watch it. Bro! I was so busy officiating and, like, taking right, notes I'm and shit like you. that. Sam Shaboon destroyed his fingers. Yeah. There you go. We just had a great okay, debate. And the Muslims are livid. By the way, the response was so huge. They had so many viewers that someone told me that on Twitter they said, there needs to be a part two. They want to host another discussion between Christians and Muslims. This time, I'm not going to do it according to their agenda. Let me repeat. Okay? Let me repeat. I accepted whatever they imposed on me. The time limits, the topics. I had no say-so in the matter. Maybe Jay had something to say, but I had no say-so. Okay. I did it so they won't say, Sam's scared and he's running. This time around, they're not going to do it that way. We're going to do one topic at a time, and we're going to have ample time to cross-examine so I can bury them even worse if they invite me back for the glory of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, or I don't have anything to prove, right? So I want to repeat, the time limit, the format sucked. It was terrible. It was geared to helping the Muslims, but because Jesus is almighty, guys, 
What Satan intends for evil, Almighty Jesus, the Son of the Father, love of the Spirit, takes what Satan intends for evil and will use it for good because Satan is a creature under the feet of Jesus. So they set it up on their favor. The Lord redeemed that to destroy them. The destruction is so bad that I got word from Jay, from a reliable Muslim source. I can't mention the name. Jay told me this from a reliable Muslim source. I can't mention the name because Jay told me don't mention. Who's in these social media outlets and platforms where the Muslims frequent? And he said that the ijma, the majority of Muslims, are saying among themselves, the majority, that Ijaz and Daniel got destroyed. See, they'll say it among themselves. This is why I found out that even Farida, Farida, the one that Christian Prince likes to pwn, just came up with a, I think it's what, 30-minute response to my arguments, right? I can't tell you who, who it is. And the man that told Jay is a man of integrity. He's unlike these Muslims. He's a man of integrity. And he said, Ijma, Ijma means majority, consensus. Of the Muslims are saying in these social media outlets, platforms, they got destroyed. Glory to you, Father. Glory to you, Lord Jesus, Almighty Son. Glory to you, Holy Spirit. Fill us, seal us, empower us, own us, never to shame you, but glorify you. And Lord, give me many years to serve you and see my daughters grow up if you tarry. All right, so it is what it is. Another thing, I was with Jay Dyer. I can't mention the name because this name will get me a flag. I was on Jay Dyer today for an hour exposing the political military agenda of Islam. I can't tell you the name. I will get flagged. But you can find it on I'm not what I'm not channel. I can't even, I'm scared to even link to it because I told I'm not what I'm not. He may need to edit out certain images because it may give him a flag. So, but I can tell you it's on my Twitter. So if you go to my Twitter, let me show you. On my Twitter, how to get to my Twitter. Let me see. I was with Jay today because uh, I, I can't mention it. I don't, I don't want to take a chance. Honestly, if I if I say it, I may get a Pray the Lord Jesus blesses us. Pray the Lord Jesus blesses us and preserves the channel. The two strikes were removed by October. Lord, protect this channel from getting a third strike. Now watch this. I just saw this right now. Look at Mrs. Apostate repented. Look what she did. Watch here. I just saw this now. See, guys? She just shared this video. Muslim cries while reading the gospel. See that? She also did this. So why does that intention whore, Anthony Rogers, join David Wood when she's a diehard Orthodox? And Anthony condemns the Orthodox Catholic churches. So now look what she also did. Look what she also shared. Not only she shared that, look what she also shared which blessed my heart. Look what she says. Orthodox Christian men, rise. Wow. She's on fire. Catholics rejoice. She's your sister because she's part of the body of Christ. Sadly, you're in schism, but the Lord bring union. Look what she said. Orthodox Christian men, rise. Fight the devil and his angels by devoting yourself to God through prayer, fasting, and divine liturgy. Go encourage this sister. Pray for her. Wow. Are you blessed or what? Is she not humbling us? Wow. See that? See that? There she is. What is it? Why are you having trouble? Rumble? Refresh? Why is Rumble, is Rumble working? This says having a hard time on Rumble. Still working, right, on Rumble? All right. Still working on Rumble, right? So for some reason, StreamYard is telling me it's having a hard time. Rumble, you guys okay? I don't know why it said that. I just want to make sure. StreamYard said having a hard time. Why? It's streaming. I see it's working. All right. Let me know, Rumble. It's working? All right. Now watch this other post of hers. And I'm going to show you where you can go on my Twitter and find it. I cannot mention the name. Look what else she she posts. All right. She shared this, my response, huh? 
All right, but here, I want to just show you this post, and we go into the topic, I promise you. She blessed me when I saw this. I was really humbled, like, wow, this sister is really learning from this channel. May I continue to be a servant to her for the glory of Jesus Christ? Where is it? She just posted something else. Okay, I'll find it. Let me go to my profile. It was something from her, right? But anyway, it is what it is. So let me go to my profile. Let me find it. Where is it? All right. Let's go here. My profile. What day is it? Is this the profile? No, profile. Okay. What is going on here, dude? Oh, that's why. Because I got to zoom out. You and me. Yeah, let's go here. Here's where you're going to find it, folks. I can't mention the name. Right here. You see why I can't mention the name? Jay Dyer sent this to me. See why I can't mention the name? On my Twitter? I joined Jay Dyer for an hour. Jay Dyer, Exposing Real Engine and the Secrets of Islam with Sam Shimon. So go to my Twitter. Let me get you my Twitter. And Jay told me I got to be careful. Okay, so here it goes. I can't do it. Uh, pray and by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, here you go. There it is for everyone. So with that said, let's get into the topic, shall we? Let's get into the topic. We're continuing where we left off. If you forgot what the topic was, I'm going to focus on the reformers. What did they teach about the Blessed Holy Virgin Mother? Our Blessed Mother, the Theotokos. So you see how far adrift the Protestant Reformation or the Protestant evangelicals are from their Protestant roots. You can go to Rumble, guys. You guys on Rumble, you go here. You'll find the articles in the description box. Likewise on YouTube. YouTube, it's in the description box, but there it is. Let's now look at what the Reformers taught on the perpetual virginity of Mary. And then maybe I'll have time to talk about very readings, if not, because the reason why I'm not fully switching Rumble, I already have 258,000. I want to continue to build up YouTube. May the Lord purge my motive, not for numbers. So I will be live stream and rumble but i can't just abandon youtube altogether i still got to work on it until the lord says otherwise now focus here on the topic we already discussed what the reformers taught on the assumption of the blessed mother and how they observed the feast of the assumption i'll go back and look at some protestant com commentaries on revelation 12 where protestant commentators admit that the woman is also a symbol of mary they'll say it's multifaceted. In one sense, it's a symbol of Israel. In another sense, it's a symbol of the church and Mary. It's all of the above, not either or, which helps make your case. But I want to look at what the reformers taught on the perpetual virginity of Mary. We'll be looking at John Calvin, Martin Luther, Francis Turton. But before we do that, we're going to go here. Watch here. I want you to see what Luther says about Mary's praiseworthiness. Praise worthiness. I didn't even show you how to get there. See, I thought my screen is up. Okay, let me go back here. If you go to my Rumble, you'll find the articles in the description box right here. Sorry. Right there. It's all there. It's also in the description box of YouTube. So right there. You don't need to ask me. You can upload the sessions, the videos. Upload the articles to your sites, translate them, clip them, learn the arguments correctly, share them accurately, and don't charge because I don't charge you. So don't need to ask me. Take it and run with it. Now, we ready? If this is large enough, let me make it a little larger so that you can see my handsome face as well as see the article. Let me know. Are we ready so we can wrap this up? Lord willing, I may have to do a part three because I want to show you what the reformers say about particular variant ratings which the Orthodox and Catholic churches accept as part of canonical scripture. I don't know if you know this. Catholics and Orthodox, it is your tradition that Mark 16, 9 to 20 is part of Mark, inspired by the Spirit through Mark. It is your tradition that the woman caught in adultery, the adultery, the pericope adultery, John 7, 53, 8, 11, is canonical scripture. It's inspired. And it's part of John. And even 1 John 5, 7, 
Orthodox Catholic. Listen to this. First John 5, 7, where it says, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. That's part of your canon. The very verses that modern scholarship, Protestant scholarship, claim are disputed and may not be authentic. And yet that scholarship is now seeping into Catholic institutions and Orthodox institutions and poisoning Orthodox and Catholic scholars to adopt these views, which goes against the heritage of the church. Do you know that? And yet I'm going to show you from the reformers like Francis Turretin and John Calvin, they accepted all of these as canonical scripture and authentic. Okay? I want to show you that. I have an article on that. How far adrift have the Protestants, right, gone? And yet, because of that kind of scholarship, it's seeping into Catholic Orthodox institutions, and Orthodox Catholic scholars are following suit, which means they're either ignoring or abandoning the tradition. Don't follow them. Everyone with me? All right. Don't follow them. S-S-S soul, just pay attention. You with me? You're learning, right? You're not bored? Lord, increase the numbers for your praise, not for my majesty. For your majesty. All right. Strengthen my throat. Make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. So let's see what Luther says. The following is taken from William Cole's article, Was Luther a Devotee of Mary? Found in Marian Studies, volume 21, 1970, page 131. And he's quoting... Luther's works, which you can find here. I link to it. Look what he says about the Blessed Virgin. You ready? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's true, yes. Is it St. Lambert? I hope for all. Yes, I used to go to St. Lambert. And the priest there was Richard Simon, Father Richard Simon, who's retired. Yep. Is that her? Then maybe I... She recognized me, but I'd have to see your face to know. All right. Anyway, here you go. Look, Luther, in a Christmas sermon of 1531, Luther speaks of Mary as, quote, guys, as the, quote, highest woman and the noblest gem in Christianity after Christ, end quote. You see the difference with the Protestants today and the reformers of the past? You see the difference? Have you heard Anthony Rogers, Louis Fagetheart, Kelly Powerless speak of the Blessed Mother this way? Now watch what he goes on to say. Okay, he goes on to claim that, quote, quote, she is nobility. She is nobility herself. Wisdom and holiness personified. We can never honor her enough. Still honor and praise must be given to her in such a way as to not injure, as to injure neither Christ nor the scriptures. You see that? Focus so, please. Chime in less and learn more. Listen more. Do you see that? Wait, Luther said we can never honor her enough. Still honor and praise must be given to her in such a way as to injure neither Christ nor the scriptures. When's the last time you heard James White speak this way? Or Anthony Rogers, or Louis Fagadart, or Kelly Powerless. They're more Protestant than Luther, and they think they know more than Luther. And they're more faithful to Scripture than Luther, even though Luther was a scourge on the church. As was John Calvin. All right, let's see what Francis Turretin says about Mary's perpetual virginity. So you go back here. Right here. But we'll see if we have enough time. I'll probably go through the variant readings today. You go here, and it's in the description box of YouTube. Francis Turrington, courtesy of Perry Robinson, Orthodox philosopher extraordinaire. He allowed me to share this post, which is found on his blog, Energetic Procession. And I link to it right here. What does Francis Turrington? Ironically, Turretin fan is named after him. He's a fan of Francis Turretin. 
What does Francis Turton say about Mary's perpetual virginity? You guys can see the screen, right? It's large enough. Let me see something. See if I do this, if you can still see it. Are you enjoying this, guys, or you're thinking it's a waste of your time? Large enough? All right, it is large enough. Let's read. All right. So here he goes. I give you the link where you can read it on Pierre Robbins's site. But here, quote, Francis Turretin, 1623, 1687, no small name among reform authors, also favored the doctrine. Here's a summary defense of the teaching that Mary was perpetually virgin. This is not expressly. Now we're quoting Francis Turretin, guys. <clears throat> May the Lord strengthen my throat and that my voice keeps up. Okay. He is considered one of the greatest reform scholars of the Reformation. Okay. Reformation. He's not a Joe Schmo. What does he say about the Blessed Mother's perpetual virginity? Quote, this is not expressly declared in Scripture, but it is yet piously believed with human faith from the consent of the ancient church. Oh, so sola scriptura, total scriptura doesn't mean that if it's not taught explicitly in Scripture, you don't accept it. You have to look at the devotional patterns and beliefs of the ancient church. Really? Really, go back to your Catholic roots, brother. You were deceived. Thus, it is probable that the womb in which our Savior received the auspices of life, once he entered into the world as from a temple, was so consecrated and sanctified by so great a guest, meaning the Holy Spirit, causing her to conceive the physical body, human nature of Jesus. So Jesus is now indwelling her in all his fullness, that she always remained untouched by man. Nor did Joseph ever cohabit with her. Now, notice who he's going to rebuke. One of the men that these heretics, Bible butcherers, Anthony Dodgers, Jamila White will appeal to is Helvidius. Helvidius was an Arian heretic who denied that Mary was a perpetual virgin. You see how wicked and dishonest these people are? James White, Anthony Rogers will appeal to Helvidius. Now, Unbeknownst to me, I didn't know who Helvidius was. I was simply parroting what I learned from James White, Eric Svensson. I found out later that Helvidius was an Arian heretic who opposed the ancient tradition of the church that Jesus is not the first creation of God, but God, God is tripersonal, and Mary was a perpetual virgin. So I was now leaning on a heretic to show, see, not everyone believed that Mary was a virgin. Well, he also didn't think the Trinity was true. And that Christ was the first creation of the Father. See this honesty? The better question is, did your father know about the fact that, Paul, did your father know about the fact that you're not his seed? You're the bastard seed of a spiritual whore, the prostitute of the Shia, who did muta with her and gave birth to you? Does your, did your father know that, Paul? You spiritual bastard? All right. Watch here. Hence, Helvidius and the anti Marianites, so called because they were opponents of anti anti -ki Mary, are deservedly rebuked by the fathers. Did you see that? He's saying these folks who deny that Mary remained a virgin, remained a virgin, the fathers correctly rebuked them. They were right in rebuking them. For denying that Mary was always a virgin. A, a Parthenon. Wow. Did you guys know that? Did you know that one of the most influential Protestant reformers, Protestant theologians, Francis Turretin, said that Helvidius and the others who denied Mary's perpetual virginity were wrong, and the early fathers were right for rebuking them, for denying that? Did you guys know that? They held that she cohabited with Joseph, meaning Helvidius, and the anti deco Marianites after delivery. Yea, also bore children from him. As Augustine remarks, they rely on the shallows arguments. So Turretin agrees with Augustine. Their arguments are pathetic. Well, they're the same arguments that Turretin fan uses, Anthony Rogers uses, 
James White uses, i.e., because Christ is called the firstborn of Mary. I used to use that because I learned from these Bible butchers and false teachers. For as Jerome well remarks, she was so called because no one was begotten before him. That's all. Not because she had children later. Not because there was another after him. Hence, among lawyers, quote, he is the first whom no one precedes. He is last whom no one follows, end quote. The Hebrews were accustomed to call the firstborn also only begotten. Israel is called the firstborn of God, although the only people chosen of God. Thus, the firstborn is said to be holy unto God, Exodus 13, 2, who first opened the womb, whether others follow or not. Otherwise, the firstborn would not have to be redeemed until after another offspring had been procreated. The law shows this to be false because it commands it to be redeemed a month after the birth. Numbers 18, 16. What he's saying here, you, you Bible perverts who say that, well, if Jesus is called Mary's firstborn, Luke 2, 7, firstborn means others follow. No, that shows you don't know the Bible. Let me explain this argument. You guys want me to explain this argument? What he's saying here? You want me to explain his point? Same arguments that the early Christians used, Jerome, Augustine, and others. Same arguments that the Catholic Orthodox use. And isn't it ironic? It's James White, Anthony Rogers, Kelly Powers, using the arguments of heretics, Helvidius, an Arian anti-Trinitarian. They're using their arguments, whereas the Catholics and Orthodox are using the arguments of the Trinitarians. Is that ironic? James White is using the arguments of Arian heretics who rejected the Trinity. Heretics condemned by the Trinitarians and those who are representing the true tradition, the true faith, the bishops, their members who are disciples of bishops, disciples of bishops, disciples of the apostles, an unbroken chain. And they said, this has been the ancient tradition given to the apostles, to their churches, where their heirs. Mary, perpetual virgin, Trinity is true. And you guys keep following these false teachers. All right, up to you. So what is his argument? His argument is, Einstein, isn't it true that in Exodus 13, 2, God says, when you have a firstborn son or the firstborn of the cattle, Within that month, you must redeem the firstborn, because all the firstborn belong to me. But you must redeem the firstborn, right? Because all the firstborn are to be given to me in service. But you can redeem your firstborn by offering a sacrifice. And you have to do it within a month. Now, what's the point? If firstborn means other children follow, then this makes no sense. Because in Exodus 13, 2, the first child born has to be redeemed in a month when there are no other children. So he, he is not called firstborn because there are other children after him. He's called firstborn because he's the first child born, whether others are born or not. You understand the argument now? Yeah, you got to go, brother. You're, you're, you're too stupid, buddy. So, sorry, man. You make Kelly Powers seem intelligent. Get the hell out of here. All right. Do you understand the argument? You can be called firstborn without other siblings. Like Exodus 13, 2, the firstborn male, he's only a month old. There are no other siblings, but he's still the firstborn. Because firstborn means status and that you're the first child, whether there are other children or not. So you can be the firstborn and the only born. Well, here's my firstborn son, and he's the only son. So just because Jesus is called Mary's firstborn does not mean she had other children after him. It means he's the first son born, but the only son of her womb. But there's also another implied meaning. There's another deeper meaning behind Christ being firstborn. Jesus says his true brothers and sisters are those who do the will of God the Father by obeying Christ, being born of the Spirit. So Mary is Jesus' physical firstborn, but at the same time, since Jesus says true filial relationships, 
are not based on coming out of the same womb or having the same father, but based on being born of the Holy Spirit, united to Jesus Christ, because your union with Christ makes you sons and daughters of God. That means that there is a sense in which if Jesus is my brother, then Mary is my mother. So if Mary is my mother, then yes, Mary is the mother of her firstborn, Jesus Christ. But then the rest of the children who become children of God through faith in him are also his children because if I'm Jesus' brother, then she's my mother. Right? We got it? May the Lord bless my neighbors with sound sleep so I don't keep them awake because I don't want to be too loud. Everyone got it or no? All right. So Francis Turretin is refuting this argument. He's saying, what a stupid argument. You're saying because he's Mary's firstborn, that means other children follow? This is Francis Turretin, guys. If Francis Turretin was alive, he'd rebuke James White. He would spit on Anthony Rogers' face and throw them out of the church. Get the hell out of here, you heretics. You're no better than Helvidius. I'm not lying. This is Francis Turretin, one of their big names. But you think they care? It's Sola Widia, Toda Widia, Sola Dagiria, Toda Dagiria. What fat porker, Calvinist porker says. All right? Now watch here. Look, he's refuting these arguments. The arguments that James White uses, Eric Svensson, look, a reformer, Francis Turton, not more solidly have they been able to elicit, meaning no stronger still is the argument that they use that in the New Testament, certain ones are called the brothers of Christ. You see that? He goes, that's not any more solid. That's pathetic. It is common in scripture, not only for one's own and full brothers, by nature to be designated by this name, but also blood relatives and cousins as Abraham and Lot, Jacob and Lebanon. Thus James and Joseph, Simon Judas, are called brothers of Christ by relation of blood. For Mary, who's called their mother by Matthew and Mark, is called by John, the sister of the Lord's mother. So this is another Mary, not Mary, the mother of our Lord. That's Francis Turton, dude. How come your Protestant pastors how come your Protestant pastors didn't tell you this? How come James White doesn't talk about this? How come Anthony Rogers doesn't mention that their own magisterial reformers are destroying their pathetic arguments, which they use to show that Mary had children? You Protestants, be honest with me before I continue. You Protestants, be up very honest with me. You're a Protestant, right? When's the last time you heard your Protestant pastor or your Protestant apologist tell you this was the view of the Reformers? He would say, no, the church's bathroom are cleaner and better than Kelly and Anthony Rogers. Why are they holding this from you? Why is it that it takes Catholics and Orthodox to study your history and find these quotations. Why do they have to do it? Why do they have to do it? All right. So Chaldean, when are you going to come back to the church? Your church is the Catholic church. You were baptized there. Repent. Go to your priest. Tell him you were wrong. Go back. Nothing for you in Protestantism, brother. You're baptized Catholic. Go back. Ahoni. Chaldean is saying they're the same people. Go back. All right. See what he says? However, what is said in John 7, 5, that neither did his brethren believe him, must be understood of more remote relations, meaning cousins. How about when it says, and Joseph did not know her until, another pathetic argument that I learned from James White, Eric Svensson, and their own. Francis Turrenton, their spiritual daddy. Nor is it derived better from this. This ain't any better. This is what he's saying. This argument ain't any better. Joseph is said not to have known Mary till she had brought forth her firstborn son. The particles till, heos, heos who, heos how to, till and even unto, are often referred only to the past, not to the future, i.e., 
They so connote the preceding time concerning which there might be a doubt or which it was of the highest importance to know as not to have a reference to the future meaning until we'll refer that this situation did not change until this time. But when that time comes to pass, that doesn't mean that a change occurred. It only means up to this point, the condition remained as it is. Afterwards, it's open. It may have remained even beyond that point or may have changed. But you can't say, well, until this point, then things change. Matthew didn't say it. That's not how the word till is used or even unto. And he gives you examples. Genesis 28, 15. God says, I will be with you, right? Until this particular event in your life. Does that mean when that event happened, God abandoned him? Psalm 122, 2, or Psalm 110, 1, where God says to Jesus, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Does that mean when Jesus destroys his enemies? He'll no longer be seated as king. Or Matthew 28, 20, where Jesus says, and surely I am with you until the end of the age. That means Jesus will then abandon us at the end of the age because he's only with us until the end of the age. And this is Francis Turretin, a reformer destroying this argument. See? See that? A reformer. Okay, let's finish his point. Thus, it's shown what was done by Joseph before the nativity Christ, that he did not have sex with her before his birth, to wit, that he abstained from her. But it does not imply that he lived with her in any other way postpartum. Doesn't mean that afterwards he then touched her. That's not what Matthew's addressing. Matthew just wants to ensure that Joseph was not responsible for the conception. That Mary conceived by the Spirit and gave birth to him without Joseph touching her. But afterwards, he's silent. So why are you now talking when Matthew is silent? When therefore she is said to have been found with child before they came together, prin e senil teen autus, preceding, meaning preceding before copulations and I, but not subsequent affirm. Doesn't mean that afterwards he did copulate with her. Wow. That's Francis Turrentin, huh? Institutes of Electic Theology, Volume 2, pages 345-346. Although copulation had not taken place in that marriage, it did not cease to be true and ratified. Although unconsummated for not intercourse, but consent makes marriage. Damn, he just buried James White, Anthony Rogers. He goes, hey. Yeah, Joseph did not touch her, but that doesn't mean afterwards he did so. He didn't need to have sex with her to act as her husband. All that was needed is that he acknowledges, I'm her husband, she's my wife. That's it. Therefore, it was perfect to form, to wit, undivided conjunction of life and unviolent faith, but not as to end, to it the procreation of children, although it was not deficient as to the raising of the offspring. You caught what he just said? You caught what he just said? They have this. They already have this material. They didn't need me to unleash it on the world. I'm late to the game. All right. Now, that was Francis Turretin. I won't need to read him. Now, we're going to go here to this article. The Reformers, and it's in the description box, on Mary's perpetual virginity. Okay, you ready for this one? Oh, you meant to say, I will not, because you spelled it, we not. I will not allow you to dishonor my mother. You better believe it. You're enjoying this, folks? Good crowd for a late night. All right, so now here, I had to do this because of the assumption was upon us. Let's see what Martin Luther says. Martin Luther and then John Calvin. Let's see. We'll go John Calvin, Martin Luther, Zwingli, huh? Bullinger, John Wesley. We already read Francis Turretin. We're not going to read Francis Turretin, right? So we're not going to read Francis Turretin. Now, John Wesley and Charles Wesley, the Wesleyan brothers, their church is the Methodist church, right? And they're Arminian, 
meaning they believe in free will. They're not Calvinist. Okay, let's, let's work it our way back up. Okay. John Wesley, letter to a Roman Catholic. He's writing to a Roman Catholic. Quoted in A.C. Coulter, John Wesley, New York, Oxford University Press, 1964, page 495. I believe, he's, he's writing Roman Catholic. He, Jesus Christ, was born of the Blessed Virgin, who, as well after, as she brought him forth, continued a pure and unspotted virgin. Damn, John Wesley? That's William Lane Craig's tradition from what I remember. He's a Wesleyan. Really? Really? No way. Yeah, he's a Wesleyan from what I recall. He's a Wesleyan philosopher, I believe. What about E.W. Bullinger? I believe this is Bullinger E.W., maybe another Bullinger, but anyway, he's a reformer. Quoted in Hilda Graf, Mary, A History of Doctrine and Devotion, combined edition of Volumes 1 and 2, 1965, Volume 2, pages 14 and 15. In Mary, everything is extraordinary. In Mary, everything is extraordinary and all the more glorious as it has sprung from pure faith and burning love of God. She is the most unique and noblest member of the Christian community. Wow. She is the most noblest member of the Christian community. And in Mary, everything glorious, pure, right? Extraordinary, isn't her? The Virgin Mary, completely sanctified by the grace and blood of her only son, completely and abundantly endowed by the gift of the Holy Spirit and preferred to all, now lives happily with Christ in heaven and is called and remains ever virgin and mother of God. Ever virgin? Ever virgin? Really? All right. Well, maybe it's not that important. And Wesley, ah. How about Zwingli? Zwingli. 1524, Zwinglian sermon reads, Mary, ever virgin, mother of God. This comes from Thurian, page 76, right? And this is cited in G.R. Potter, Zwingli, right? The Perpetual Virginia Mary, September 17, 1522, right? Comes from this source. All right. How about this one? The Thurian, again, page 76. Same sermon, right? I have never thought, still less taught, or declared publicly anything concerning the subject of the ever Virgin Mary, mother of our salvation, which could be considered dishonorable, impious, impious, unworthy, or evil. I believe with all my heart, according to the word of Holy Gospel, that this pure virgin, bore for us the Son of God, and that she remained in the birth and after it a pure and unsullied virgin for eternity. Damn, James White. Damn, Anthony Rogers. Damn, Kelly Powerless. Why didn't you tell me this is what these reformers thought? Do you see what he said? And that she remained in the birth and after it a pure and unsullied virgin for eternity. Okay, what about this first part? Here, J.R. Potter is talking about Zwingli. He turns in September 1522 to a lyrical defense, a lyrical meaning a musical defense of the perpetual virginity of the mother of Christ to deny that Mary remained in Violata before, during and after the birth of her son was to doubt the omnipotence of God. Did you catch it? He's singing lyrical tones saying that if you deny she remained inviolate before, during, and after the birth of Jesus, you're denying God's power, you heretics. And it was right and profitable to repeat the angelic greeting, not prayer, Hail Mary. So you could repeat it. Him. Say Hail Mary. God esteemed Mary above all creatures. Say what? All creatures? Man, that sounds like Catholic Orthodox teaching. And above the saints and angels? It was her purity, innocence, and invincible faith that mankind must follow. Prayer, however, must be to God alone. Fide expositio, the last pamphlet from his pen. There is a special insistence upon the perpetual virginity of Mary, the last thing he wrote. Oh. 
What about John Calvin? And by the way, you can read Calvin's commentary online. It's there. He says this. It's there. He says this. All right? John Calvin, Anthony Dodgers, that spiritual bastard, spiritual father, Jamila White's spiritual father, John Calvin. You can go read his comment online. It's not made up. Here it is. Look what he says. Again, notice who he mentions, Helvidius. Guys, do you see the perpetrator, the most famous perp perpetrator of Mary having children after Christ, the denier of Mary's ever virginity, Helvidius, an Arian heretic, whom Jerome refuted. By the way, there's an entire book, translated English, where Jerome is destroying Helvidius's, Helvidius's arguments against Mary's perpetual virginity. It's online. Jerome spanked him. Let me show you where you can find it. And John Calvin and others read the church fathers and writers. Here it is. You can read it online if you ever get a chance. Every argument that James White and others use, every argument they use against Mary's perpetual virginity, already used by Helvidius and destroyed by Jerome. Jerome. Same arguments, guys. Right here. The perpetual virginity of Blessed Mary. Here it is. Response to Helvidius around 383. I swear to you, every argument James White, Anthony Rogers employ, Helvidius was employing, not the Orthodox Trinitarian Christians. And Jerome, representing the true church, the true faith, is refuting Helvidius, the very arguments of Helvidius that James White and Anthony Rogers employ. Who really do they belong to? Here it is. Here's the article. Who really do they belong to? I mean, the book. It's online for free. Online for free. There it is. Jerome is destroying Helvidius, an anti Trinitarian heretic, using arguments from Scripture to deny that Mary remained a virgin. The very arguments that James White, Anthony Rogers continue to employ, even though they claim to be Trinitarians and following this historic church. Who are they following, man? Do you guys believe they're following the early church? How is it that even John Calvin says it was Helvidius, the heretic, who used these arguments, and Helvidius was already soundly refuted by Jerome? You guys got the link, right? So you can go read it. It's a short read. It won't take you long. See why? The Lord's timing is perfect. I wanted to do something on the Reformers and biblical variants. And I said, I'll do both. What the Reformers stated about Mary, our Blessed Mother, and these variants. And I wanted to do it early in the week, but God's timing is perfect. I ended up doing it on the Feast of the Assumption yesterday. All right? Go back to the Chal Chaldean Church, Chaldean Bull. Listen to me. If the Lord brought you here, that means the Lord heard your prayers, and he's speaking through me. That's why you're here, Chaldean. Go back to the Catholic Church. Tell the priest you were wrong, and the Lord will have mercy on you. All right, so now let's go back here. Okay, we enjoying this? Let's see what John Calvin says, mentioning who? Helvidius, the heretic condemned by Jerome. Helvidius displayed excessive ignorance. Did you catch it? Guys, this is gold. Shove it down Anthony Porker's throat. John Calvin said, you're an ignoramus. You're an idiot, Anthony Rogers. You're an idiot, James White, because Helvidius used your argument. Helvidius displayed excessive ignorance in concluding that Mary must have had many sons because Christ's brothers are sometimes mentioned. He just said, Anthony Rogers, Kelly Powers, James White are ignoramuses, idiots, imbeciles. His commentary in Matthew 13, 55, because that's their very argument. That's their argument, folks. You see it on the screen? 
And it, you can read the commentary online. These are not forged quotes. Calvin's commentary is translated in English. It's rare. What are you going to do? So they're all wrong, huh? Reformers, who the hell is writing your book? Who do you leave intact? Your reformers are wrong. The early church fathers are wrong. Did anyone get it right? You know they're insulting the Lord. Let me explain the implication. They don't think they do, and that's what makes them dangerous. In their stupidity and pride, they think they're honoring the Lord. They're telling you that the Lord Jesus did such a poor job in preserving the church and rising the right, raising up the right men, that all these Christians taught things that are so unbiblical, and Jesus did nothing to prevent them from agreeing on false doctrines and as a majority or unanimously for centuries until these clowns showed up. So they're actually insulting the Lord. That's why the Lord convicted me and showed me I better repent. And I did. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that I didn't resist the Spirit because he didn't give up on me. You may be there? Go to your priest and talk about a big boss. Don't bring up irrelevant issues. You understand? That's the implication? You caught it? That's the implication of their blasphemy? These wolves? Oh, look what he says again about Helvidius. What does he say about Matthew 125? I'm going to show you this on line so you don't think it's made up. Here, Calvin on Helvidius using Matthew 125. Joseph did not know her until, which Jerome already destroyed. Jerome destroyed that. Jerome destroyed it in that book. The inference he, Helvidius, drew from it was that Mary remained a virgin no longer than till her first birth, and that afterwards she had other children by her husband. Now look what he says about Helvidius. No just and well-grounded inference can be drawn from these words. Did you catch it? No just and well-founded inference can be drawn from these words that afterwards Joseph had sex with her. Only someone who's ignorant, Helvidius, will make that inference. So he just called James White, Anthony Rogers, idiots again. As to what took place after the birth of Christ, he is called firstborn, but it is for the sole purpose of informing us that he was born of a virgin. What took place afterwards, the historian does not inform us. Matthew doesn't tell us what happened afterwards. No man will obstinately keep up the argument except from an extreme fondness for disputation. Do you see what he just said about James White, Anthony Rogers? No one will use this argument anymore because it's bad unless they just want to cause division and debate. And isn't James White boast about having 191 moderated debates? G. King, focus and don't change the subject. I don't want to get you out of here. Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Go back then to your apostolic church and repent and tell the priest. Go back. Go back. Glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Rejoice, brethren. Spirit is convicting these folks to return to their churches, the ancient churches. Robot, if that upsets you, yes, die hard. In fact, I'm waiting for the Pope to make me his right-hand man. Yes, I'm in the Catholic Church. It doesn't mean I don't acknowledge and love the other churches, or I won't go to them. So I hope the Pope calls me and says, Sam, would you be my right-hand man in theology? I'll say, with pleasure. Right? But anyway, you got it? Now, what about the words, brethren? John Calvin, commentary on John, John 7.3. Under the word brethren, the Hebrew include all cousins and other relations, whether whatever may be the degree of affinity. Damn. I'm going to show you online. All right? I'm going to show you online. Right here. Look what he says. John Calvin's commentaries on the prophet Jeremiah in the Limitations, Volume 4, pages 76, 77. But it may be asked here, with respect to whom is he thus called? For it follows that there were other sons of God. Now watch. If Ephraim was the firstborn among them, but this conclusion is not well founded. Look, there, he's addressing those say, well, hold on. If you're called firstborn, that means there are other sons, right? 
That's why you're called firstborn. He goes, no, that's not a good argument. That's a stupid argument. Your logic doesn't follow because look what he says. Look, but this conclusion is not well-founded. Why? Look at the example he gives. For Mary is set to have brought forth her firstborn son, who is yet her only son, meaning she had no sons at that time. What does he mean? He's saying, how could Jesus be called Mary's firstborn son if the word firstborn means there are other children, when at that time there were no other children? But they didn't stop Jesus from being her firstborn son. And Christ is called elsewhere the first begotten with reference to all the faithful that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8, 29. Now watch. But Mary had brought forth her only son. Hence the word firstborn does not prove that others follow. Damn, John Calvin, you sound like Catholic Orthodox, dude. The second and the third in their order. But we may say that Ephraim was called the firstborn of God with reference to the Gentiles, right? The only nation chosen and the first nation chosen. Who at length became partakers, partakers of free adoption. For we also are the children of Abraham because we have been planted by faith among the elect people. Yet this solution seems to me more refined than solid. I then give this simple interpretation. Why is Ephraim called the firstborn? That Ephraim was called the firstborn because he was preferred to all the Gentiles. God was pleased to choose them as his people. But now notice what he says about Mary. Mary gave birth to her only son. She had no other sons. And yet Jesus was still called her firstborn. Damn. Now, unless you think these are forged citations. Study light right here. Commentaries. Let's look at John Calvin online. Here it is. John Calvin, right? Here's the link. None of these are forged. John Calvin. And we're going to end with Martin Luther. Luther. And Lord willing, I'll do part three some other time. But tomorrow I'm going to do John 5, John 8, John 10, Lord willing, to destroy some more objections by Arians like Stafford. All right? So here it is for all of you. Online, so you don't think, right? You don't think. You don't think that we're making up quotes. Another pervert who quotes a passage that he thinks we never heard. No, I never heard that one. Your mother brought. No, I never heard that one. All right. Yeah, gee, you got us on that one. Yeah, return to your vomit, dude. Mike Winger is calling you. All right. So let's go to Matthew. Let's see what he says. Matthew 125, right? So right here in front of your eyes, you see it? Matthew 125, front of your eyes, right? Okay. And we're going to end it with. We're going to end it with Martin Luther. Here you go. Let's go to 25. 25. Right here. Okay. Right here. Boom. You see it here? See if we made up the quotation. Word for word as it appears in the post. Word for word, right? Okay, watch here. Word for word. And knew her not. This passage afforded the pretext for great disturbances, which were introduced into the church at a former period by Helvidius. The inference he drew from it was that Mary remained a virgin no longer than till her first birth, and that afterwards she had other children by her husband. Jerome, on the other hand, earnestly and copiously defended Mary's perpetual virginity. Let us rest satisfied with this. That no just and well-grounded inference can be drawn from these words of the evangelist so as to what took place after the birth of Christ. He is called firstborn, but it's for the sole purpose of informing us that he was born of a virgin. That's it. It is said that Joseph knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. But this is limited to that very, very time. What took place afterwards, the historian does not inform us. Damn. Such is well known to have been the practice of the inspired writers. Certainly, no man will ever raise a question on this subject except out of curiosity. And no man will obstinately keep up the argument except from an extreme fondness of disput disputation. And here, the note, giving you in Latin, he is called firstborn, but for no other reason that, that we may know that he was born of a pure virgin, pure virgin. Who had never had a child. That's it. That's all you can say. You can't say anything beyond that. Right? 
Let's see what he says in Matthew 13, 55. Let's you say, oh, you guys are lying. But you know what they're going to tell you? Well, who cares? We don't say John Calvin's infallible. Martin Luther is infallible. We follow sola scripture. No, you follow your interpretation. Because in one breath, you want to tell me John Calvin was a theological genius. Who knew the languages? And at a young age, wrote Institutes of Christian Religion. A genius. Martin Luther, a scholar par excellence. And yet, somehow, their knowledge of Greek, Hebrew, Latin, German, their knowledge of syntax and grammar and exegesis in the early church failed them to see what you see. See, they're liars, dude. They're liars. The Lord showed me their lies. They don't care about anything except their own particular denomination and their view. God save us from that pride. They're lying to you. They're false teachers, man. I'm letting you know. What does he say here? And then note, Jerome replied to Helvidius in a work titled Contra Helvidium di Betu Mario Virginitati. Calvin has formally alluded to the controversy between these two authors elsewhere, right? That's the book I showed you online. Is not this the carpenter's son? It was, we are aware, by the wonderful purpose of God, that Christ remained in private life till he was 30 years of age. Most improperly and justly, therefore, were the inhabitants of Nazareth offended on this account, for they ought rather to have received him with reverence as one who had suddenly come down from heaven. They see God working in Christ and intentionally turn away their eyes from the sight to build Joseph and Mary and all his relatives, thus interposing a veil to shut out the clearest light. Now here, we don't misquote. We try to be honest. Unlike Anthony Rogers, who quoted forgeries, who promoted lies, who got corrected, doubled down and hid like a coward and never apologized to his fangirls that he was misinformed, quoted dubious sources because he's proud and arrogant. May God save us from that. The word brothers, we have formally mentioned, is employed agreeably to the Hebrew idiom to denote any relatives, whatever. And accordingly, here's that heretic again, whom Anthony Rogers and James White follow, Helvidius displayed excessive ignorance in concluding that Mary must have had many sons because Christ's brothers are sometimes mentioned. Calvin just buried James White, just buried Anthony Rogers, just buried Kelly Powers. But Kelly Powers doesn't care. Kelly Powers doesn't care. Right? He doesn't care. Well, Martin, Anthony Rogers and James White should care because they claim to be Reformed Calvinists. And they swear by Calvin's doctrine of predestination, which is from the pit of hell. Kelly doesn't care. He doesn't care who said what because he thinks the Bible magically descended upon his lap. Now, you want to end it with Martin Luther, the granddaddy of all daddies? Martin Luther? Martin Luther, granddaddy of all daddies, and we're done. Here we go. We'll go back to my article. Martin Luther, here he is. Martin, Lu Martin Luther, so we start, and that's it. And we'll end it with this. Hope you enjoyed it. Pray for me, Lord. I'll be back sometime in the afternoon Saturday. Talk about John 5. John 8, John 10, to destroy some other Aryan objections, which I have covered in the past. But again, staff reminded me I need to do it again for your benefit. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Holy Spirit. You know where to find the articles. They're in the description box. Go on these platforms. Teach your children. Catechize your churches with the permission of your priests and bishop. Go and shove these down the throat of these Protestants on Discord, on Twitter, right? TikTok, you name it. Do it. It's yours. Here it is. Martin Luther's sermons, right? Luther's works, editors, Jaroslav Pelikan, who became Orthodox, by the way. He has since deceased. He's with the Lord, but he became Orthodox. Helmut T. Lehman, St. Louis, sermons on John, chapters 1 of 4, okay? Volume 22, to, volume 22, colon 23. Christ 
our Savior was the real and natural fruit of Mary's virginal womb. This was without the cooperation of man. And she remained a virgin after that. This is burial, man. Do you guys see it? She remained a virgin after that. Again, from Pelican, volume 22, 214 to 215, Sermons on John, chapters 1 and 4, in the year 1539. Okay, Pages 214, 215, and volume 22. Christ was the only son of Mary, and the Virgin Mary bore no children besides him. I am inclined to agree with those who declare that brothers really mean cousins here for Holy Writ and the Jews always call cousins brothers. What more do you want, Protestants? You've been duped and deceived. You've been duped and deceived. What more do you want, Protestants? Go back to the ancient churches. What more do you want? Here it is, Pelican again, volume 45, page 199, that Jesus Christ was born a Jew, 1523 or 1523. A new lie about me is being circulated. I am supposed to have preached and written, this is what Luther is saying, they're lying about me that I wrote and preached. Mary, the mother of God, was not a virgin either before or after the birth of Christ. I never taught that. That's a lie. Wow. Finally, again from Pelican. Volume 45, page 206 and 212, 213, that Jesus Christ was born in June 1523. Scripture does not say or indicate that she later lost her virginity. When Matthew 125 says that Joseph did not know Mary carnally until she had brought forth her son, it does not follow James White, Anthony Rogers, you tools of Satan, that he knew her subsequently. That means afterwards he knew her. On the contrary, it means that he Never did know her. Never. This babble is without justification. He has neither noticed nor paid any attention to scripture or the common idiom. That means James White and Anthony Rogers are babblers. The burial of James White, the burial of Anthony Rogers, the burial of you Protestants who are not even faithful to your Protestant heritage. Aren't you thankful? And I'm thankful. The Holy Spirit showed us the truth because I didn't know this, but the Spirit did not give up on me. May He never give up on us. May the Holy Spirit own us and fill us and seal us, our loved ones, my daughters, forever and ever. Make us the everlasting possession of Christ. Destroy all lies, errors, and sin in us. And we finish the race. We're done. Time for you to leave your Protestant churches, guys. Sign, man. I'm not attacking now. Let me be clear. If you are Protestant, who loves and worships the triune God, loves Lord Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, who believe Christ will return physically, bodily, to judge living and dead, the resurrection of the dead physically, born of the virgin, died and rose again. I love you and I cherish you. You're my brother, sister in Christ, but you don't have the fullness of the truth. You don't have the fullness of the truth. Now that said, guys, here's how you can bless me. You prayer warriors, keep praying for my daughters and I. God grant us miraculous safety. Security, protection, health. The Lord give me discipline to get healthier and leaner and not be vain and get holier and never fall into a scandal. Never shame the Lord, but finish the race glorifying the Lord. My daughters grow up to be in love with Christ. The Lord brings them to me, removes them from this adulterous marriage. The Lord brings them to me and I raise them up. And if the Lord tarries, they grow up to be godly women, married off to godly men, and I die finishing the race after that. If God is pleased, the Lord bless this young lady. Make a way we come together and finish the race and I can be Christ to her and pray for provision. PayPal patron, full-time ministry. The Lord doesn't need me, but if he wants to use me, may he stir up your hearts to partner with me. And Lord, help me with the IRS. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Be back sometime in the afternoon Saturday, God willing. John 5, John 8, John 10, more on the deed of Christ and the Trinity to destroy Arianism. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Purify, wash, and cleanse us, our loved ones, my angels. Bring them to me in the blood of Jesus. Nourish us and feed us the flesh and blood of Christ and help me to get to the Eucharist, Lord. Please help me. And purge us in the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit 
and seal us, our loved ones, my daughters, and finish the race by your power. Remain faithful till death by your power and the work you've begun in us completed for your glory, Father, for your glory, Lord Jesus, for your glory, Holy Spirit, not for our praise. And destroy censorship that the channels will not be deleted. We need you, Lord. You don't need us, and we love you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Christ is risen, risen indeed, modern Lord willing, see you soon.